Welcome to our interview series with Women Human Rights Defenders. Today we speak with Lei Peng Pua, a chemist and a women human rights defender working on environmental justice in Malaysia. Lei Peng founded Kuala Langat Environmental Action Group and initiated a campaign against illegal plastic recycling. Malaysia receives huge amount of plastic waste from the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and other countries, which outsource plastic recycling to Southeast Asian countries. Local recycling companies in Malaysia that are supposed to recycle that waste often dump it in landfills, which heavily pollutes the environment. Therefore, with her action group and campaigns, Lei Peng challenges not just the illegal recycling in her country, but the global garbage and recycling system that is incompatible with the protection of environment. Lei Peng, thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure to join your program. Thank you very much. Could you please tell us how you founded the Environmental Action Group and initiated the campaign in your community? It's about four years ago, me and residents, we felt very sick and found because the air in my community was smelly. So on investigation, I found many illegal plastic recycle factory nearby my uh, community. And I was shocked that those plastic waste are actually import from many developed countries. So I made many reports to the authorities, but the problem just been played down for months. So I founded the Environmental Action Group to fight against the factory. Thank you very much. And what methods did you find most effective to bring attention to the issue of plastic waste in Malaysia and internationally? Well, I found the mass media, both local and international media, were the most effective. Um, is that when, when, when the disasters happened, that um, we felt sick, uh, we tried to call help from our authorities. Uh, but, you know, because the corruption system, that our voice is just been covered up. So fortunately that we get uh, the mass videos from uh, BBC, CNN, in, and also some NGO uh, in Tunisia like, like Greenpeace and uh, some local NGO. So when the scale of uh, severity of the pollutions were exposed, the Malaysian authorities could no longer cover up the uh, scandalous situation and trust to action to deal with the problems. Uh, after that, few hundred illegal factories have been uh, closed down. But this is not the end of the story because actually they didn't disappear. They just uh, moved to other community that don't have activists like us. So uh, up to that, I would say that the problem is still there and we still need to have a long journey for us to go. Thank you very much. And given the fact that, as you say, this is a global issue and it just keeps moving around, I wonder how you and uh, how, how you cooperate with other environmental defenders across borders to build an international movement. Okay, uh, it's true when I know that the plastic being burned and dumped nearby my community is far, far away from UK, from USA, from Japan, from Australia. And I realized this uh, plastic pollution is a global serious issue. And it's not because the Asian people, they are weak in managing the plastic waste. It's not the only issue. Another issue is many plastic waste being sent cross boundary to the developing country. So, so uh, due to this, we need to connect and cooperate with other international defender or NGO or government too. So we have a work very well with, for example, with Greenpeace Malaysia. When they uh, uh, found, we put up the YouTube in the, of the footage in the YouTube, they contact us and then we uh, work together with them to come out a very detailed report which launched on uh, October, uh, November year 2018 to call for a, a global awareness about you know, how, how, how the plastic waste uh, sent to Southeast Asia uh, uh, brought uh, this extra to them. And we also invited by Greenpeace New Zealand 
to share in their campaign Plastic Dirty Secret you know, on the end of uh, year 2018. And we also be invited to attend the uh, uh, 20, 21st uh, uh, Union uh, United NGO Forum on uh, Human Rights in Belgium on uh, December of year 2019. So in the forum, I highlighted the environment uh, disasters happened here in Malaysia and in French of human rights by the cross-boundary plastic waste uh, from the developed country to developing country. We need to inform and educate exporting country what happens to their plastic, plastic rubbish when they are dumped in our country. It's totally, uh, I would say most of, of the waste are sent to uh, illegal factories and uh, uh, the, the, the worker uh, working in a very uh, inhumanity uh, way. So they, are, they, they didn't, uh, they are not being provide a safe environment when uh, recycle the, the, the waste. And at the same time, many of the waste has been dumped and burned because many of them actually is not recyclable. Thank you. And I also wonder um, what kind of risks are connected uh, with your work and what kind of risks do women human rights defenders face in Malaysia? And if you can think of any ways how to mitigate these risks? Well, I face some physical harm risk. The plastic rubbish recycler had hired organized professional criminal to attack me by spraying red chemical paint on me. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the criminal attacked the wrong person. My sister, who resembled me as he exit our house, he had to cut her hair away and use chemical to clean herself. And in Malaysia, spray someone with red pen is a warning to kill or break your blood. Okay. And uh, I think to immediate uh, this risk, we need more mass media to report the truth that the dirty plastic waste trade is happening now. That the plastic waste delivered to Southeast Asia country that are actually helping those people, uh, immoral people, they use, they earn a lot of money from the waste, and yet they use the money to threaten the activists. This is really bad, and, and this is a very, you know, like hypocrite way from the developing country. They thought they are really, you know, they are really uh, the front line of uh, this uh, environment protection. No, I will say that, you know, this is really uh, 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 immoral and uh, it's already disgraceful. Is it happening now that the plastic track is really a dirty track? Thank you very much for this. I wonder what you think, how is gender equality connected to environmental justice? I found in Malaysia, many uh, uh, NGOs uh, is led by women. Okay, but actually we have a few male activists who were both worker and active, but I was picked. Why me? I think it's because, uh, but, but not my male counterparts. I think it's because the illegal recycler, they thought that I was a weaker gender. Okay, and more vulnerable maybe. So I think they, 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 they are more easy to track a woman instead of a man, but I would like to tell them that it's nothing about gender. It's about, you know, your mission to protect your family. No matter who you are, if you know that your family is uh, in a very dangerous situation, you know, the pollution going to take away their life, shorten their lifespan, no matter who you are, you will stand out. And women, I will say that play the most role in this um, situation that because I think they have a higher feeling of responsibility to that, to protect their family. Thank you, thank you. And I wonder what kind of message or lesson learned you would like to share with other women human rights defender who work on environmental justice or on other issues, maybe you would like to share something. 
Okay, I would say never give up fighting because my experience told me that if you give up easily, the illegal factory, they will multiply very, very fast. So I think our success in past few years to keep, to, to cross down so many illegal factories because our persistence. So don't give up fighting. We women are as good and in Malaysia context, we are better gender in fighting the plastic rubbish pollution. So just continue, don't stop because don't give them have a room to destroy your family and don't wait until too late. Thank you so much for these great words and for sharing your insights with us. And uh, I wish you great success for your work, for the significant work that you are doing. And um, thank you again. And thank you for watching us and see you in the next interview.